my name's Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So I'm back today with one of my Sunday sewing catch-ups and I'm on episode seven, which is amazing. I'm really enjoying sharing all of the things that I'm getting up to in the week and I'm finding this really helpful in terms of organising my week ahead and making plans and keeping a log really of what I've been getting up to. So I hope you're enjoying them as much as I'm enjoying filming them. So today I've got lots of things that I want to share with you. Um, I managed to sew quite a few things this week, which I was amazed about because work's been quite busy. Um, we've got a week left now of term, which is very exciting. On the one hand, I'll be really sad because I'll miss my class. But on the other hand, this year has been quite a year for working in education. And I'll be quite glad of the break um, and a chance to sort of rest and recoup. Um, so, yeah, we've only got a week left and we've got lots of exciting things planned for the children next week. Um, so, yeah, it's been quite busy. So I was quite surprised, actually, that I had managed to get a few things sewn up. But all of the things that I managed to sew up this week, I already had cut out. And I find batch cutting really helps my productivity. It means that um, the task that itself, cutting out, I'm, is not a very exciting task for me, if I'm honest. It's one of my least favourite um sort of sewing related tasks so i tend to batch cut quite a few projects and i'll have five or six things cut out ready to go um and i do find that means that i can just concentrate on the sewing um which is always really lovely the sewing part for me is definitely my favorite and i love seeing that finished garment at the end of it so i did manage to sew up quite a few things this week next week i'm going to be focusing mainly on sewing some gifts and then getting prep for the summer because I've got a few things that I want to sew up in the first sort of week or two of the summer um, including the Persephone trousers that have been cut out for a good couple of weeks. So before I dive into um, all the things that I want to share today I'll let you know what I'm wearing. It's absolutely boiling in London at the moment so I've got on a play suit that I made in this amazing sunflower fabric and I got this sunflower fabric a few years ago from Simi Sunshine and this is a hack of the um, Zadie jumpsuit pattern if I stand up you'll be able to see I've just hacked it into some shorts so this is quite an unusual thing for me to wear because it's quite short you can see where my knees are I don't normally wear this sort of thing that's very very short um, when I'm not on holiday but it's so hot I just needed something that wasn't going to stick to me uh, it's got the pockets like the Zadie has and all I did was um, shorten the trousers and I've got the normal wrap that you would have and it and it ties and then the grown on sleeve I've got the crossover wrap detail and the back is exactly the same. I just literally shortened the trousers to turn it into like a shorts play suit. And it's definitely the best thing to wear on a day like today where it's really hot and I don't really want any clothes sticking to me. This fabric, I can't remember what it was. I feel like it's got some linen content, but it's not massively drapey. So I can't remember what it was. If I remember, I'll put in some information about it. But this was, I bought this a good couple of years ago. So I don't think... Um, Harriet will have any of this fabric anymore um, but yeah I love all the sunflowers and the flowers and it's just really lovely and light and airy to wear on a day like today. So I'll move on to what I've been sewing up this week. So in my last episode I think I talked about the Tabitha t-shirt pattern um, so I've got them here because I did manage to get them almost finished. So the Tabitha t-shirt pattern is a pattern from the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book really straightforward quite simple t-shirt there's Tilly wearing hers um, it comes in sizes if I just find the pattern for you is it there nope always do this I always vow to be um, more prepared and I'm not um, so here is the Tabitha t-shirt pattern from the make it simple book um, it recommends that cutting time would take about 30 minutes and sewing time an hour and 30 minutes it's just a classic t-shirt, um, not too tight, not too loose, classic fit with a round neckline and a choice of three sleeve lengths. So here are the three sleeve lengths. I just went for the short sleeve, but then you can do, what do they describe it as, three quarter sleeves or full length sleeves. It comes in sizes UK 6 to UK 24. For a UK 6, it's a bust measurement 30 inches, waist measurement 24 inches and hip measurement 33 inches. And then for a UK 24, it's a 48 inch bust, 42 inch waist and a 51 inch hip. In terms of fabric suggestions, they recommend light to medium weight knit fabrics with at least 10% crosswise stretch like a jersey, interlock, stretch velvet, lightweight French terry or sweater knit. So, 
Um, so the fabric that I used for all of my t-shirts was a lightweight French terry. Now it does feel quite thick and I think this is a t-shirt that will be too warm for me to wear in the summer but it'll definitely help me out in the spring and autumn when the um, temperature is still slightly cool. Um, so I've got one made up in this lilac fabric. Um, I've got one made up in this pistachio green fabric and these were both from um, Hey So Sister, I love that colour. And then I've got two that were made up in the See You at Six French Terry that I got from Sony Sunshine. And in my last video, I was asking about um, suggestions of whether I should add the ribbing to the hem. And that's exactly what I did. And I'm really pleased with the way that it's turned out. So thank you to everybody that suggested that. Um, so here is the first one. And yeah, I just added the ribbing to the bottom. And I really like the look of that. It just added a bit of length because it was slightly cropped. Um, but I don't think it looks out of place. I think it goes really nicely because I've got the ribbing on the neckline. Um, I have overlocked the sleeves and the hems on all of my um, t-shirts, but I haven't hemmed them yet. They'll probably, obviously I've added the ribbing to this one, so I haven't hemmed the sleeves. To be honest, it's probably going to stay like that for a couple of weeks. I have no idea why I do that, but I tend to always leave those last really simple steps for ages. It takes me weeks and weeks. So you can see this one is hemmed at the bottom, uh, not hemmed overlocked at the bottom and I've done the same for the sleeves and I just need to turn them up press them and then stitch them it's take me half an hour to do all of the t-shirts and I've no idea why I haven't got around to doing them yet but um I will get around to doing them eventually and then here is the other see you at six French terry with the ribbing on the bottom so I'm really pleased I think these are going to be great um t-shirts when the weather gets a bit cooler in the autumn probably normally in like September when it's still warm but it's not summer warm um, and I just adore those See You at Six French Terries. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. And this lemon, lemon print one is just fantastic too. Um, so those were the first things and they were pretty much sewn up. All I needed to do was the neckband and then I need to hem them. And I added the ribbing to the French Terry, the See You at Six versions. But the others are just overlocked and I need to just um, hem them. Um, and then the other two things, that no, three things. Four things actually that I got sewn up this week actually I'd forgotten about that and um, the first one I said that I was going to do in my last video I'll just grab it so the next thing that I got sewn up was using this gorgeous um I think it was a viscose jersey from um rainbow fabrics and this green colorway with all the flowers all over and I've turned it into a maxi length Friday pattern company Westcliff dress um, so there it is with the additional tear on the bottom and I just absolutely love that. I haven't been able to wear it yet because this isn't something that I'll wear to work. I think it's something that I'll wear out to dinner um, or, you know, when I go out on a day out. And it's been quite warm recently, so I haven't had a chance to wear that. Um, but this is the pattern. It's by Friday Pattern Company. I adore the Westcliff dress. This is the version that I've sewn up and I sewed up a small because I've got a bust 34 inches. My waist is 27 inches, my hips are 35 inches, so I do fit really nicely into the small measurement. It comes in sizes extra small to 4X and for an extra small it's a 32 to 33 inch bust, 24 to 25 inch waist and 34 to 35 inch hip. And then for a 4X it's 53 to 54 inch bust, 46 to 47 inch waist and 56 to 57 inch hip. Um, it's a stylish and comfortable knit dress with a faux wrap front and an A-line skirt and then these, the option to add that gathered lower tier. In terms of fabric recommendations, it's perfect for knit fabrics of all kinds, but you just need to make sure it's got at least 25% stretch. If you choose a knit with more body like a ponte, it'll have a more structured modern look. And if you sew it in a drapier knit like a round jersey, it'll have a more romantic look. And then you can do the shorter version too, um, which you can see there. I absolutely love the Westcliff dress. And I'm really pleased with this version. If I get a chance to get photos, I'll pop an image in. Otherwise, you'll have to wait for my July makes video. Um, but yeah, this is what it looks like. It's got that crossover here and then the sleeves, short sleeves. You add sort of a, um, it's not a facing. You add, oh, I don't, what do they call it? Binding. You add a binding along the neckline. Um, and then I always add waist ties you can do a belt but I just prefer to sew the waist ties into the side seam be before you attach the bodice to the skirt and then I've got the long skirt here um, with the tear it's really lovely I absolutely love this fabric and I think it's going to be a great addition to my wardrobe especially because I love green 
Um, so that was exciting. And because it's a knit fabric, it sewed up fairly quickly. And I already had it cut out, so all I had to do was sew it up. And it was a really enjoyable sew too. So the next thing that I got sewn up this week was a version of the Timmy and the Buttons Sky Sundress, which is a new pattern that's just been released. Um, it's a really lovely floaty, swishy sundress. And it comes in three different skirt length options. So you can do a mini length skirt, you can do a knee length or you can do a maxi. And then it's got these faux ties on the top. I don't know if you, you probably see better there. It's got these faux ties on the straps. Um, now, the way that you finish the bodice or the way you're meant to finish the bodice and the armhole section is with bias binding. But I wanted to see if I could hack it to fully line the bodice. And that's exactly what I've done on this version. And I'm really pleased with the way it's turned out. So I'll talk you through how I did that in a second. Um, the Sky Sundress comes in two size bandings. So it's a um, UK 6 to 24 or a UK 16 to 34. And for a UK 6, the bust measurement um, is 30 inches, waist measurement 24 inches and hip measurement 33 inches. And then for a UK 34, it's a high bust 56 inches, bust measurement 60 inches, waist measurement 53 inches and hip measurement 61 inches. In terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend light to medium weight fabrics, like a cotton lawn, poplin, seersucker, lighter weight linen and blends, double gauze, viscose, rayon, tensile, silk or poly crepe de chine. So a huge range of fabrics. It's a really adorable pattern. I actually had mine on, did I wear it yesterday? Yes, I put it on yesterday after we'd done a market. It was so hot. I wore a jumpsuit, my tie dye jumpsuit. Um, and then when I got home from the market, I was so hot that I needed to put sundress on because it's so loose and floaty. It doesn't really stick to you. A bit like this jumpsuit so it was the perfect thing to pop on so i've had this fabric in my stash for absolutely ages i think it's a rifle paper company fabric so if I, it's a bit crumpled i need to press it a little bit more um it's just been lay on my chair since i finished it but how gorgeous is that fabric i think it is a rayon fabric it's either a viscose or a rayon but i just love that pink the bright pink that you've got in there and all of those florals, that's the back view, um, and that is the front view. I've just gone for the knee length version, and again, if I can get photos of this um, before I edit this video, I'll pop a photo in. I've inserted waist ties, which I really like doing with the sundress. It's really floaty, and it's meant to be really floaty, um, but I just worried about it sort of drowning my frame. So I've added some waist ties, just so that I've got the option to bring it in at the back. And then it also adds a really cute bow detail on the back of it too. So as you can tell, I don't know if you can tell actually, I have fully lined the bodice. So I didn't have to use bias binding at all. Um, and I feel like it gives a really clean finish on the armholes and the neckline too. It was a really straightforward hack. So in the instructions, they recommend using bias binding. So what I did to um, fully line the bodice is I cut two of the front bodice, two of the back bodice. And on the front bodice, I don't know if you can see, you can probably see on the line drawings better, but there's some bust um, pleats and that just gives a little bit of shaping on the top. It's got an empire waistline and um, so it does sit quite high up just below your bust. Um, and what I did for the front is I kept the bust starts in for the front piece. I don't know if you can see them, they're just here. But on the, the inside piece, the lining piece, I didn't use the bust starts. Um, I did have, did I have to? No, I didn't actually. I was going to say I had to gather it in, but I didn't have to. So I kept the bust starts on the outside, but on the inside, I didn't feel like I needed them. So I cut the front bodice piece twice, and then I did the same for the back bodice piece. I cut that twice. I didn't actually have enough fabric um, to do the back bodice piece on the fold. So I just cut it with an additional seam allowance, and because it was on the inside, it doesn't really matter. You can't really tell. And then what I did was I sewed the shoulder seams for the, the um, main fabric and the lining fabric. Um, and then you attach the main fabric and the lining fabric all along the neckline um, for the front and the back. And what I was careful to do was I made sure that I stay stitched the neckline and the armholes because I didn't want them to stretch out when I was doing the burrito method. Um, and then once I had sewn the neckline together, you then lay out your bodice flat so I just lay it out on the table and then you roll from the sort of side seam and the shoulder the armhole 
you roll it like a sausage or like a burrito and then you pull the lining or the main fabric round to meet itself and then you encase the rest of the fabric within that. I found a brilliant, um, where was it from? I found a fantastic YouTube tutorial from, I think it was Seamwork. I will link it in the description below because it was amazing for explaining how to use this method to fully line your sky dress if you want to. Um, so I'll pop that in the description because I found that so helpful and really straightforward and you pause it as you're following the steps along. And I'm really pleased that I've managed to fully line the bodice front and back. I much prefer that finish. I feel like it gives a much cleaner finish. I do find bias binding, I find it quite satisfying adding, but it's also quite fiddly and quite time, time consuming. So if you were looking for a way to fully line your sky dress bodice, um, check out that video, I'll link it in the description below, because it was so helpful and really straightforward. And I'm really pleased that I've got another beautiful sundress, and then I also added pockets. So I've got pockets here too. And this fabric's been in my stash for over three years, so I'm just delighted so delighted that I've had this sewn up into something now after having it in my stash for so long. This is such a beautiful fabric. I just couldn't work out what the perfect project was. So sometimes I think it's okay to have fabrics that stay in your stash for a while because the perfect project eventually comes along. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased. I've got another beautiful sundress for the summer. And then the next thing that I got sewn up was something that I talked about, I think, in my last video. And I shared this beautiful fabric that I got from Hey So Sister. Absolutely gorgeous fabric. I think it was a viscose. If it's not a viscose, it was a rayon. It's so beautiful and lightweight. Um, and I wanted to turn it into a pair of summer trousers or culottes. So I used a pattern from the Tilly and the Buttons, Make It Simple. I'm just tucking the pockets in. Um, I've already tried it on quite a few times this morning and then I gave it a really good press. Where's that book gone? So I used the pattern from this book again, the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book. And I used the pattern um, called the Sophia Trousers that you can then hack into a dungarees or a play suit. So this is the pattern. Um, I added two inches onto the bottom because I wanted to make sure that they stopped at my ankle because they are ever so slightly cropped. So I added two inches to the bottom and they stop at my ankle, which is absolutely perfect. That's exactly the length that I wanted them to be. Um, in terms of cutting time, it says 20 minutes and sewing time an hour and 15 minutes. They've got a flat fronted waistband and then they've got elastic around the back, which creates these lovely gathers. Um, really straightforward to sew up. They've only got um, two pattern pieces, the front leg and the back leg. You cut two front legs, two back legs. Um, and then you can also add inseam pockets if you want to. And I just used a pocket pattern. I think I might have used the pocket from the Lyra shirt dress because it's a really deep pocket. And I just inserted that into the side seams. Um, really straightforward to do um, as I was constructing the legs. In terms of sizes, it comes in a UK 6 to UK 24. So waist measurement for a UK 6 is 34 and a quarter inches and a hip measurement 35 and a half inches. And then they give you the inside leg measurement too, which is 25 and a half inches. And then for UK 24, it's a 52 inch waist, 53 and a quarter inch hip, and then 25 and a half inch inside leg. Really straightforward, collot pattern. Um, the only fiddly bit really is inserting the elastic just to make sure that you catch it and then you get those lovely gathers on the back. Um, in terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend light to medium weight drapey fabrics like a lightweight linen, chambray, tensile, viscose, rayon, crepe, plissé, stretch velvet or viscose jersey. Um, and this fabric to me just screamed summer. It's absolutely beautiful. I love those yellow. They look like flowers and then you've got a few sort of dark green bit and then white background. And um, they're absolutely gorgeous. I'm really pleased with them. Um, I've got the pockets there and then you've got the flat fronty waistband here and then it's just gathered with elastic in the back. Really, really enjoyable sew. Probably took me less than an hour to sew them up if I'm honest. I know it says an hour and 20 minutes in the book but I think it took me less than an hour. They're just really floaty and I can't wait to wear them. Um, and I'm really delighted that I've used that gorgeous fabric um, to make a lovely summery and probably spring actually and autumn pair of trousers. Um, so that is everything that I've been sewing up this week. 
quite a few things. It, well, it seems like quite a few things, but the t-shirts were pretty much done. I just needed to attach the neckline, uh, the neckband and the hemband on those See You at Six t-shirts. The um, sapphire trousers were already cut out. The sky sundress um, was an experiment, which I'm really pleased um, worked out. And I'd already cut that out last weekend, actually. Um, what else did I show? Oh, there's another thing that I've got sewn up and I haven't shared that with you. So the next thing that I've got sewn up is um, using this gorgeous viscose linen fabric that I got from Sony Sunshine with all the flowers all over it. Um, you will have seen or worked out what I've actually sewn up. I've just sewn up a really simple gathered skirt I'd originally wanted to use this fabric to sew up a pair of the Sophia um, trousers, the culottes, um, which I sewed up using the Heiso sister fabric. But I didn't have enough fabric. I only had a metre of this and it wasn't as wide as I thought it was. Um, and I just couldn't get the pattern pieces to work on the fabric. So in the end, I just cut. It was the most simple pattern. I didn't follow a pattern. I just made it up myself. But I just cut two long rectangles because I wanted a super gathered skirt two long rectangles and I sewed them up. This hasn't got pockets because I didn't have enough fabric. Um, I just sewed it up by the side seams um, and then I just cut a waistband. Um, did I cut the length of the fabric? I can't remember if I did. Uh, no, because I gathered the fabric into the waistband. So I just cut a waistband front and back, sewed that up, attached it, left an opening, threaded some elastic, which I measured against my waist for how comfortable I wanted it to be. Um, and hey presto. I've got a really cute summer gathered skirt, which I'll just pair with just a t-shirt or a vest or a blouse. Um, really, really straightforward. I love how gathered it is. I used all of the fabric. There wasn't a single scrap of waste for this pattern. Um, and that was deliberate. And that's why I just turned it into a really simple summery um, gathered skirt. I'm really pleased. I just cut two rectangles and then the waistband I used the rest of the fabric that I had left over to make sure that I didn't have any scraps left over of this fabric and it's really satisfying when you can use every single scrap of a fabric and not have any left over. Um, and I think this is going to be a great addition to my summer wardrobe. I don't wear skirts very often um, just because I bloat with my irritable bowel syndrome. My tummy measurement um, varies throughout the month and throughout like even weekly it varies. Um, so quite often I do opt for things that have got elastic in just because it makes it a bit more comfortable and a bit easier, especially when my um, body measurements are fluctuating. So I think this is going to be a great addition to my summer wardrobe. I love how gathered it is and how swishy it is. And that fabric is just beautiful. I love all of those colours. And I'm really pleased that I managed to find the perfect pattern um, to sew up with this fabric. So all of the things that I got sewn up, a couple of things I already had cut out and a couple of things I only needed to do little bits with. So I'd say the most fiddly thing that I made was the sky sundress, um, just because I was working out whether I could fully line that bodice. But the video that I used was so clear and helpful, so I definitely recommend going to follow that. And the link will be in the description below for you. So let's see what else I wanted to talk about today. Oh, I've got a couple of YouTube channels that I wanted to to recommend a couple of people that I've just started following over on YouTube. I love watching sewing vlogs. I've said this millions of times in my own sewing vlogs. I feel like I've got a sewing friend in the room as I'm crafting away. Um, and I love hearing what everybody else is getting up to, feeling inspired by plans and seeing lovely fabric as always. Um, so there's two people. The first one is Rachel and her YouTube channel is The French Seams. And I've just been really enjoying um, watching her videos. She's got a couple of videos over on her YouTube channel. And what I also love um, about discovering new people is being able to go and binge watch all of their videos. Um, so do go and head over. I'll put a link down below so you can go and check her out. But Rachel is The French Seams over on YouTube. And then the other person that I wanted to recommend who I have just started following on YouTube, and again, she's got quite a few videos so you can go and binge watch all of the videos, is Amelia, who is So Amelia over on YouTube. I've been enjoying watching her videos as well. Um, and I love being able to recommend new people. I love it when I hear about new people over on YouTube too, um, because I just love watching sewing vlogs. Um, so do go and check both of them out and I'll link them down below. So that's Rachel, who is the French Seams, and Amelia, who is So Amelia. Uh, then I have got some fabrics to share with you, as always. So I think I'll start with a couple of fabrics that I've got from Minerva. Um, Minerva Craft. So they shared this gorgeous strawberry cotton poplin fabric. It has been pre-washed 
um, and I just fell in love with it. So I'm just going to hold it up for you. So here it is. It's got this gorgeous, fun strawberry print all over it. And the strawberries are red and pink. I think it was something like $3.99 a metre or something. I think it was in the sale. Um, so it's a cotton poplin. So for that reason, it's not got a huge amount of drape. But I do really love sewing with cotton poplin. Um, this is really lightweight, actually. Really lightweight. It would make a beautiful summer dress. And what I think I'm going to do with this is I'm going to turn it into the new pattern by Helen's Closet, which is the Reynolds dress. And I'm going to talk about that at the end of my video because I've got plans for another fabric. Um, but I just fell in love with this strawberry print detail. I think it's really cute. And it's on a lemon background, which I thought was unusual as well. And it just screamed summer to me. So I bought 3.5 metres of this fabric. So I wasn't sure what I was going to turn it into. But I think I'm going to turn it into the Reynolds dress which I'll share the pattern in a second. Um, so that's the first fabric. And then the next fabric is a ripstop fabric, which I haven't used before, but I fell in love with that retro print. It's absolutely gorgeous. And this is just gonna become a lightweight. You can hear it, how crinkly it is. I'm just gonna turn it into a lightweight rain jacket. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. I can't remember how much I got of this. I think I got three meters of this. It's really lightweight. It's sort of really silky. Um, and it's waterproof. I haven't sewn with ripstop fabric before, so if anyone else has, and you've got any tips for me, do let me know. But I'm going to do some research on this. This is going to become a just a lightweight rain jacket for like the autumn time. I just absolutely love that retro print. I think it's so fun. It reminds me of the 80s. Um, so yeah, I know it's going to become a raincoat. I'm not going to rush into it because I want to do my research with it. I don't think I'm going to line it because this is quite lightweight and I just want, the idea behind it is uh, just a quick, um, lightweight rain mat that I can just pop on, um, when the weather's still quite warm, but it's rainy outside. Um, but yeah, I just fell in love with that fabric. I think they've got loads of this fabric left. So I'll link both of the fabrics down below so you can go and check them out if you want to. How fun is that print? I think it's fabulous. Um, so it's going to make a really cool jacket. If I've got enough, actually, I might make a little bomber jacket or something for my girls. A matching bomber jacket. Um, I think they'd wear it. It'd be cool to have matching jackets because I did buy quite a lot of this fabric. Really fun. And then the next fabric I wanted to share with you is this gorgeous fabric. I'm going to share it in a second that I got from um, the lovely Faye, who is... Bay Studio Jepson. She always sells the most amazing fabrics and she always gives little sneak peeks. Um, and I can never resist when she shares sneak peeks of fabric, especially when it's this fabulous. Now, have you ever seen a more perfect fabric for an early years teacher? I just absolutely love it. It's on like a mint, um, sort of pale mint background. And it's got all these different children all over it. And I just think it's so fun. Now, I think think I got two and a half meters of this fabric and it's definitely going to become a dress of some kind. I'm not 100% sure which pattern I'm going to use yet. Um, it's a cotton poplin. I just loved the print. I thought it was so fun and I've just noticed the selvage. It's got all little children's faces all over it too. Very, very cute. Um, it's a fabric by Anne Kelly for Robert Kaufman. I can never say that name properly. Um, but yeah, I just love it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I think it needs to be turned into a, or I, the pattern that I need to use with it. I need a pattern that's not going to distort the faces and the children too much. Um, I'm thinking like a really gathered skirt would be amazing with just a really simple top, um, top half of the dress. Um, but I'm not 100% sure which pattern I'm going to go for, but I just wanted to share. I think it's all sold out now, but Faye has got some amazing fabric. So do go and check her out. I just absolutely adore all of the faces and all of the children that are on that fabric. It's so fun. And there's little kites as well. Just absolutely love it. So I'm not sure what I'm going to turn it into, but as soon as she shared that fabric, I just had to have it. It reminded me a little bit of the t-shirts that you get at the end of the year. You know, when you get the children to draw a picture of themselves and then it gets printed on the t-shirt. It reminded me a little bit of that. Um, but yeah, it's just really, really fun. Um, I absolutely love it. So thank you. And um, Faye sends fabric and things in the post so quickly. It's amazing. I think I ordered this like on the Sunday and it had arrived by the Tuesday. It was such speedy postage. So thank you, Faye, for a gorgeous fabric. And then within that, very, very kindly, Faye sent me this. Um, and I can't wait to try and make this up. 
So it's called Kenzie and it says Kenzie is a shy, quiet fashion gal. She designs and sews her own clothes and carries her sketches in her backpack. So it's like a, um, a kit basically where I cut it all out and stuff it to make a little doll. How cute is that? And then there's a little backpack as well. Um, and there's instructions on there on how to create that. So I'm really looking forward to giving that a go over the summer when I've got a bit more headspace to follow the instructions. I need to get some stuffing for that as well. But that was so kind of Faye to pop that in with my um, fabric. So thank you, Faye. Can't wait to make her up. I think she's going to be really fun to, to um, put together. There's an Instagram challenge that I wanted to share with you. There's so many amazing Instagram challenges out there, but this one is just for fun. There's no prizes. There's no sort of rules or anything like that. Um, and I came across this when I just did a quick Google search of Instagram challenges, because I do like to be able to share if there are any new um, challenges out there, because... I know not everybody is, uh, there's so many you can't keep on top of all of the Instagram challenges. And this one was shared on the Fold Lines. So they do a blog. I don't know if they do, oh, I think they've got a blog page that's um, got all of the months of the year and then they update it regularly to include any new Instagram challenges that come out. It's a really helpful blog, actually. If I can find it again, I'll link it in the description because it just gives you an overview of all the different challenges. And like I said, they update them when there's new challenges that come out. So this is a challenge that's um, been started by Gail So Action over on Instagram. I'll link her down below so you can go and give her a follow. And the hashtag is hashtag me made in action. And I just really loved the idea and the concept behind this hashtag. And the idea is that you don't have to sew anything new, but take a photo of you wearing your me made in action. So it could be you at the beach, it could be you at the park. Um, it could be if you've sewn, I'm just looking at my sportswear at the moment because I need to pop it all away. You could be out running, um, you could just be out on a day trip with family or just wearing it whilst you do the jobs like going supermarket shopping or dropping your children off at clubs or, you know, just lay down reading a book at home or whatever. But the idea is that you share a photo of your me maids in action. So you actually wearing what you've made. Um, and I guess you know, just celebrating your lovely me made clothes in everyday situations. I just really loved the idea behind it. So I just wanted to share that with you. And I'm definitely going to use that hashtag more often. So it was hashtag me made in action. Um, I just thought it was really lovely. It sort of reminded me of the snip snap sew challenge that was hosted by Like So Amazing, where we were encouraged to get out and about and take photos that were slightly different to the normal sort of poses that we're used to doing. Um, and I thought this hashtag would encourage me to be a little bit more creative with some of the poses that I um, sort of, you know, how I pose wearing my me-maids. Because quite often I stand either with a hand on a hip or I'll have my hands in my pockets and I'll just be looking at the camera. Um, so I guess it's going to sort of encourage me a little bit to take some um, more creative images of me wearing my me-maids. So I just wanted to share that one. Um, and then the final, oh, there was a, a pattern that I wanted to talk about, actually. I've just got it on my other pair. I've got my notebook here, as always. Um, there is a new pattern that's just been released by Helen's Closet called the Sandpiper Swimsuit. Now, I haven't bought it yet, but it's currently got 20% off because it's the launch week. Um, so it's the 18th of July today. So if you're watching this like a week later, it probably won't be on sale anymore because they only have the sale for the first week of launching. So there's currently 20% off. I really love the look of this pattern. So it's a two piece, um, not just for swimwear actually, it's a sporty two piece for swimming, water sports and fun in the sun and for like active wear as well. The fabric that they recommend is swimwear, stretch knits with at least 50% stretch. And then they also recommend, it's optional, but they do recommend that you um, use some swimwear lining for the inside of your um, swimsuit as well. Um, it's high-waisted, so there's an option for high-waisted or low-rise bottoms. And then there's a swim top, which has um, either got a band finish or a wider band on top. So there's two different band options for the top half of the swim set. Um, it comes in sizes 0 to 34 and then two um, cup measurements. So a B cup for 0 to 22 and then a D cup for 12 to 34, sizes 12 to 34. In terms of sizes, for a size 0, it's a high bust measurement of 29 inches, full bust 31 inches, under bust measurement 27 inches, waist measurement 24 inches and then hip measurement 33 inches. And then for a 34, it's a high bust 58 inches, 
um, a full bust 62 inches, under bust 56 inches, waist measurement 52 inches and hip measurement 62 inches. I just really loved the look of this pattern. I'll put images in because I haven't actually bought it, but I think I probably will buy it. Um, I really love the fact that it's inclusive with the size range. Um, I love that you can sew it up and not just use it for swimming, but there's a range of different activities that you can wear it for. It looks really comfortable. Um, I love the model images as well. So I just thought I'd let you know just in case you haven't seen it. I'm sure you have seen it. Um, Helen's Closet instructions are always incredible and hold your hand every step of the way. And they describe it as quite a straightforward swimwear set as well. So if you're thinking of um, diving in to creating some swimwear, it looks like this might be a really good starting point too. I love wearing two pieces rather than a swimsuit. So it's great to have that option. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go, I think once I've finished filming this video, I might go and buy that pattern because I absolutely love it. Let me know if you've bought it or if you're planning to make it too. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to talk about was some sewing plans that I've got for the next week. And I'm definitely going to start cutting out some projects for the summer holidays too. So the first thing that I'm definitely going to get sewn up this week, and I've got lots of them to make, but they're quite straightforward to sew up, is this gorgeous little bag. So it's a little storage bag. Um, and I'm going to sew these up as gifts. Um, as it's coming to the end of the year, I've got lots of grown-ups that I need to say thank you to. Um, so I work with a really large team and I added it up. There's about 17 people that I need to say thank you to. And that includes lunchtime staff, cleaners, office staff, support staff, etc. Everybody at school that just helps me to do my job. So I'm going to sew up. I asked for lots of suggestions over on Instagram and there was loads of amazing suggestions. Um, but I need something that is quite straightforward to sew up. That's not too fiddly because I've got so many that I need to make. Um, so I thought I'd make some little storage bags, some little gift bags. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill them with some little goodies. So I'm going to make some brownies. Um, I'm going to put some hand cream in there, um, probably an eye mask or a face mask um, and a bath bomb and just some really nice like end of year goodies. And I'm just going to pop them in there um, and then wrap it up and tie it with a little ribbon. Um, and I'm going to give that to everybody just to say thank you for the end of year really really easy bag to construct it's fully lined as well which is great um, and you've almost got sort of like a square bottom um, which makes it perfect for filling with lots of lovely goodies so that is the first thing that i'm going to sew up and i've got loads of back quarters um, so that should be quite straightforward to sew up and then i can use all of my back quarters that i've been storing um, and then the next thing is something really fun that's not for me um it's for a friend so i've got a friend who lives not too far away and her daughter absolutely loves pigs um, and she has asked her mum for her birthday um for a pig dress um which is quite a unique thing to ask for so my friend hasn't actually been able to find a pig dress but she knows how much i love to sew so she asked me if i would sew up a pig themed dress for her daughter um, and she bought this amazing um, spoon flower fabric. It's been pre-washed, which is why it's creased. I am going to iron it before I sew it up. Um, but this fabric's amazing from spoon flower. I don't know if I'm holding it upside down or if, if the pigs are all just different ways because they're flying. But it's got this mint green background and hearts all over it in clouds. And then lots of flying pigs. Just that it was absolutely awesome. So I've got a couple of metres of that. And the pattern that I'm going to use is this pattern that I've had in my stash for a while. It's a simplicity pattern, 1121, um, and it goes up to age 14. So I think it's 7 to 14. She's 10, so I'm going to go off her measurements and work out which size I need to make. But I'm going to sew up this version because she wants a really fun summer dress. So this is a maxi version. Now there's line drawings on the back, and this is version C. And from the looks of things, it's got the straps that come down the back, and then they fasten in the back. But what I'm going to try and do is use the front bodice piece um, for the back as well and then just have some tie straps on the shoulder because I think that'd be a really cute feature. Um, and then we've got this um, sort of, it can stop at her knee or I can add this really fun tear on the bottom. So I think that's the version that I'm going to go for. And hopefully I've got enough fabric um, to sew that up. I think I have, I think I've got enough fabric. Just looking at the measurements. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to make a really fun um, little dress for her and I'm really excited about sewing that up there's no fiddly fastenings on this so it shouldn't take too long um, but yeah I'm going to see if I can use that bodice piece for the back bodice piece as well and just make sure that there's enough room in it for her to get it on and off 
If there isn't, then I might have to put a zip in the back, but that's fine. I can do that, no problem. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to sewing that up. So I need to get on with that really today because it's her birthday in a couple of days. And then I shared this fabric in my Sew Heli Jane unboxing. It's a cotton poplin with a sailor theme. So it's got all these gorgeous boats and anchors and waves and um, sort of ship steering wheels all over it. And I wasn't sure what I was going to turn it into. I had considered turning it into the um, jumpsuit by Tilly and the Buttons and I still can't remember the name of it. I did find an image, so I'll pop an image in. But I actually think I'm going to turn it into the new pattern that I've already talked about by Helen's Closet, the Reynolds dress. And I think I'm gonna sew this version because I think I should have enough fabric. So this is a pattern that's aimed at advanced beginners. It comes in sizes zero to 34. Uh, it's a Reynolds, it, it's called the Reynolds Top and Dress and it's your go-to summer garment. Throw this simple sundress on and you'll instantly be in the mood for a relaxing garden stroll or a cold drink by the pool. Um, and these are all the different versions. So you've got the top and then it stops at your knee or you can do maxi length and it's got a side split. So that's the version that I think I'm going to go for. Um, in terms of fabrics, they recommend light to medium weight woven fabrics with no stretch, like a linen, a cotton lawn, poplin, voile, seersucker, shirting, double gauze, crinkle cotton, tensile twill, silk, rayon, visque, vis, rayon viscose, chalice or poplin will work well. Structured fabric like a crisp cotton lawn will have a more dramatic volume and drapier fabrics will have a more fluid movement. So I know that the cotton poplin, poplin can't talk today. So I know that the cotton poplin will work really well because it's on their fabric recommendations. In terms of sizes, there's two um, cup sizes as well. There's a B cup, which is zero to 22 and a D cup, 12 to 34. So for a zero, it's a high bust, 29 inches, full bust, 31 inches, waist, 24 inches and hips, 33 inches. And that's for a B cup. And then for a D cup 34, it's a high bust 58 inches, full bust 62 inches, waist 52 inches and hips 62 inches. So looking at the size measurements, I think I'll make up a size 6 because my full bust measurement is 34 inches. My waist is 27 inches. My hips are a 35 inch, um, which is the size 4, but I think I should be okay with the 6. Um, and I'm going to sew up this version here. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and it doesn't look like it would distort because I was worried about this pattern at uh, this fabric anything distorting that print and it doesn't look like it would and if I'm successful with that then this beautiful fabric could end up being turned into the Reynolds dress as well but I'll see how I get on with it um, and I'm going to cut that out and then hopefully start sewing that but I may end up waiting until the end of term and then I'm going to use this gorgeous viscose fabric, which I've shared before that I got from Sew Me Sunshine. Um, it's been pre-washed, so it is a bit crumpled. Um, it's so bouncy and drapey, I just absolutely adore it. And I'm going to turn this into one of my favourite patterns. And I haven't sewn this up for ages, but I'm going to turn it into, let me see if I can find the line drawings. The Deer and Doe Myosotis dress, which I absolutely love. I'm hoping that I've got enough fabric for all the ruffles. I'm really hoping that I've got enough to do the ruffles on the sleeve and the ruffle on the skirt as well. The Deer and Doe Myosotis comes in sizes 34 to 52. So for a size 34, it's a bust measurement 31 and a half inches, waist measurement 23 and a half inches, and hip measurement 33 and three quarter inches. And then for a 52, it's a 45 and 5 eighths of an inch bust measurement, 37 and 3 quarter inch waist measurement, and then 48 inch hip measurement. Um, and they recommend chambray, rayon twill, batiste, double gauze, lightweight cotton sateen fabrics. So viscose will work perfectly for that. And I've got quite a few Deer and Doe Mysotis dresses in a viscose. This I will not sew up this week. I won't have enough time, but I'm definitely going to get it cut out. Um, ready to sew up in that first week. I just love that movement. Absolutely gorgeous. So that is a roundup of all of the things that I've been enjoying this week, whether it's patterns or fabrics or what I've been sewing or YouTube videos to watch. Um, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. Please do give it a thumbs up if you have. Let me know in the comments below what you are working on at the moment. Next weekend we are away. We're going to a festival, fingers crossed, all being well. Um, so I don't think I'll be able to film my Sunday sewing catch up on the Sunday, but I'll try and do it before we go away. Otherwise, I might just have to miss one 
um, and then catch up the following weekend. So apologies if I don't get that video out to you. It's going to be quite hectic because we've got a full week for our last week of school. I don't finish until half one on the Friday. So we'll see if I get a chance to film that because I'll also be packing for our weekend away. Um, if you haven't subscribed, it'd be really great if you could hit that subscribe button. Um, and I'll be back soon with another video. Take care. Bye.